There it is. <laughs> the man. Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Sir Burns a lot, and welcome back to the Don't Leave Me Hanging to, uh, Super Turtle. Last time I left you guys off, we were getting attacked by some hawks. So our vampires are going to be doing some work. The wolverines sitting over here on the corner of the base, they're going to be doing some work as well. And we're going to try to fend this attack off. Um, you see up here my Super Vulcan is being attacked by Marines, ODSTs, um, that type of deal. So you can see right here how it's fended them off and everything. Um, it's doing a pretty good job. I left a couple of units let um I left a couple of unit spaces blank so I'd be able to pump out a couple of flamers. I don't think I have oxide at this point. Once you get oxide, it's those ODSTs are going to be no problem. As soon as a infantry unit dies of yours, you can instantly just pump it right back out. Uh, so there's really no big deal there. Uh, we got the healers on this base, keeping it alive and everything. So that base is going to stay up. Uh, this guy drops a cryo. Or no, a carpet. He drops a carpet trying to drop that base. And um, that base is going to be able to stay alive pretty easily. With all those engineers on it, there's no way it's going to be taken down by a carpet bomb. I have him switch over to my Vulcan right now because it's getting a little low on health. The early game with the Vulcan is really critical. you got to keep it alive. If you have to reset it uh, really early in the game, it's going to be really hard for you to get veteran. So you need to get at least like two or three waves through it. Uh, that way you can stack up quite a bit of veterancy. Uh, the base is starting to get low on health again, so we're going to get the engineers to pop over to this base. And are they going to make it in time? I believe they're going to. I, he dropped a heal on it to get a little bit of a heal on it if he could. I don't remember if they were still attacking the center of the base. But he gets a nice little heal off on it there, so it's not going to die. Um, so he can just go ahead and start healing my Vulcan again, and we'll be good to go. Uh, the vampires are getting in on the action over here too, taking down some of these infantry units, get them some veterancy as well. Uh, the name of the game is veterancy. If you guys don't know how to play a super turtle, that is the one thing that you're going to want uh, more than anything really is the veterancy. If you don't have a lot of money, it really doesn't matter. The money will come. You just want to have your defenses set up and you want to get veterancy on your units because the veterancy is going to make your units good against everything. And after you get max veterancy, um, if you decide that it, the super turtle's taking too long, you can just roll up and... Um, you can kill them with what units you have and um, finish the game from there, turn it into a regular game from there, but you'll have max veterancy, so you'll be really hard to take out. Um, plus, it'll probably catch them off guard. They probably won't have defenses set up because they're probably just going to be trying to attack you the whole time. If they put any units and leave them back at their bases for defense, then they're probably going to end up losing um, if you guys get into a base race because you're going to have defenses set up. Um, if we were to decide to go in and attack and everything, I'd leave my Super Vulcan right where it's at because it's going to be able to take out a lot of units. Um, and they're not going to have any defense set up like that, so we're going to have the advantage there. So that's another tip for you guys that uh, want to maybe get a Super Turtle in one of these days. Um, you see that this base pretty much made it out with uh, no damage done. He lost a pad right there, but that's about it. Um, our cobras are over here kind of chilling i tell them that we need to kind of edit this cobra line and kind of shift it around a little bit because they're kind of uh the cobra line's too thick and what i say by that is if um if your first volley of cobras well if your first set of cobras can attack a unit uh by the time that unit gets up to that first line your second uh your second group of Cobras will be able to attack it, but they'll only be able to attack if they're close enough. So what you're going to see here is me tightening up the Cobra line a little bit. And um, I tell the yellow guy to do the same thing, but like I said, he's a new guy, so he's um, he's taking his sweet time to get everything done and everything. But um, it's just it takes a lot to be able to do all this. Um, and considering it was the second time ever playing a Super Turtle, he did really, really good. Um, but we do need to get this moved. If I could take his units and move them for him, I could have. I had plenty of time, and I've super turtled a few times, so I kind of get the gist of how to do everything. Um, I'm not getting Canny yet. Uh, Canny's going to be the, one of the last things I get because I don't really need it, so I'm trying to get all of my other upgrades, like my turret upgrades. I want to get reserves. Um, I think I already have reinforcements, and we're just going to go from there and see what we can do. Um, I think in the last video was the time that my Cobra uh, buckled and it went down pretty hard, so I had to rebuild it. So I think this uh, Vulcan is going to be able to stay for the rest of the game, so you guys will be able to check it out, check out the veterancy and everything if you can. I move around kind of quick, so you might not be able to catch all the stars, but 
there's a few times in the Super Turtle where I zoom in to kind of look at it and everything, and you'll kind of see the veterancy and everything. And here I'm just spreading out my Marines, um, just so if they start dropping ODSTs, I have a couple Marines everywhere so they won't just be surrounded. And uh, just kind of go from there. I think I build an infantry unit there to go put in that sniper tower. Uh, that line of sight's really, really good. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose because the Cobras can't really attack over there, but it lets me know when units are coming. So if I if I see a bunch of air units coming or anything like that, I'll be able to be like, hey man, I need your vampires over here. Uh, bring them over here as fast as you can, and I need your healers on my Vulcan, and he'll be able to respond pretty easily. Um, you see here that they snuck a unit to the back of the base. Um, a trick that some people like to do is go into that back corner where uh, most of our units are not going to be able to be at and they start dropping units in over there. Um, granted, they can't really pelican anything in because all this anti-air will take it out. If they come in with air, we can still move our anti-air around. But um, ODSTs are a really big problem um, if they start hot dropping back there. Um, just because I have, I have my defenses set up over on that side and it's fine against infantry units. This cover wall over here, it'll take a big hit from infantry units, so we need to figure out how to counter that a little bit. I can take flamers over there and help out, and the chieftain's walking around and everything, so we're fine. But behind the base, where there's no cobras, um, it gets kind of hairy back there because it's hard to get tanks back there. Um, so they can just keep hot dropping, and we'll just have to keep the healers on my base all the time, which means they could come in on my uh, Vulcan and do all kinds of work. But you see here, the air units are starting to come in. So I tell them, "Hey, man, I'm gonna need your, um, I'm gonna need your stuff over here soon because I got ODSTs as well." And he was like, "All right." So he came in with his vamps. Go ahead and start doing work here. <clears throat> The problem with uh, stasising with your vampires, if you guys don't know already, is uh, stasising with your vampires when the other team has an Anders player, they can cryo you. So what you need to do is stasis, wait a second, unstasis, and move. And a lot of times people will just go really quick and say, oh, the vampires are sitting right there, I'm going to go ahead and cryo. They'll drop the cryo really quick, it'll be really sloppy and you can just move out of the way and dodge it and most of your units will be alive. You see there the cryo's already been dropped so he can stasis if he wants to now. Um, but you see if he would have stasis earlier, if he would have stasis right off the bat, that cryo would have dropped on him unless he would have moved. So um, that was good looking out. But anyway, um, we got a couple of tanks moving up to help with the infantry. Infantry is really, really, um, it's really annoying but it's good at the same time. Um, because it's easy veterancy. It's easy veterancy for my elephants. It's easy veterancy for the tanks. Um, because they just die so easily. There are so many of them. That's the problem. Uh, that's what makes them annoying. But other than that, it's easy veterancy. So just go ahead and eat it up and go ahead and get your vet and everything going and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah. Uh, as far as this, um, this little push they're doing over here, they got some vultures coming up. Um, this is why you have to have some kind of anti-air sitting by the Cobra lines uh, because the vampires can't be everywhere at one time. The vampires are over there chilling, doing nothing, um, really, except for attacking ODSTs. So he could have been over there, but the problem was our teammate's not really, um, he's not really used to calling stuff out yet, so he didn't know exactly what to do. So he was just like, hey, man, half the Cobra wall is gone. And I'm like, what? Like, you should have told us about it. And he was just like, yeah, my bad. And so uh, <laughs> buckled. Anyway, um, so he goes over there with the vampires to go ahead and handle that, and this base is fine. He dropped, They dropped another pad, but they just lost another wave of units. Um, they lost a full pop of hornets or hawks. I don't remember if he has hawks by now yet. I think he does. And, um, yeah, we're able to completely fend that off. You see there I build a barracks. I need to start working on my ODSTs. Um, ODSTs, I don't really need them, but it's going to be really easy for me to keep that sniper tower up there if I have ODSTs. Um, not that it's a really like key defensive location, but it's just really cool to have that line of sight, like I said. Um, over here, I could actually take these guys by myself as long as I have a heal. Um, and I kind of want to because I want to get that veterancy on my uh, I want to get that veterancy on my elephant. And you see there they got the Mac uh, the Mac blast queued up over that base. I think they ended up having it glitched or whatever and they canceled it. So it ended up staying over the base, so that was something we had to kind of look at for a little while. But once we realized it was just a glitch, we were just like, all right, whatever, it's fine. Um, go ahead and get my Wolverines moving around. 
and uh, heal up these Cobras that I do have left over. Because um, if you think about it, if the other team comes up with, let's say they come up with a full pop of tanks, and uh, they don't go against the Super Volk, and they go against the other Cobra wall over there, they'll end up losing all their stuff. We might lose two Cobras. So, I mean, if you think about a full pop of tanks, if you have ten tanks, um, before you get reinforcements, you'd have ten tanks. That would... Uh, that would cost you 5,000 resources. Two Cobras cost you 700. So you do the math. That's a big plus. They have a lot of bases, um, but we have the advantage because we're playing a defensive location, and we can set down some of the strongest defensive units in the game in Cobras and Elephants and stuff like that. So um, that's where the Super Turtle really shines is being able to set up a really good defense and defend your area well get your veteran scene then you can move in later if they don't quit but the name of the game is making them quit um these guys i'm gonna give it to them like i said in the first video this game was no joke it lasted two hours um so these guys did pretty good um well i won't say they did pretty good they they stayed in it and um they they went for a long 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 time after we thought that they were gonna quit and um we had a game, the game right before this, which was the yellow guy's first Super Turtle. Uh, the Super Turtle only lasted for like 30 or 40 minutes before they ended up quitting. But it was still pretty fun, too, and I did get a Vulcan up. So I might upload it because it still was pretty fun. Um, but it's just not as exciting as, you know, a two-hour-long Super Turtle. It's just pretty, it's pretty fun. But the other guys knew when to quit. These guys just didn't know when to quit. They, um, we could have probably, we would have easily beat them if we would have played normally. Um, but I mean, not to take anything away from them, but they just, they did what everybody did when the super turtle first, uh, started happening. People just started getting frantic and just throwing stuff at you and just giving you veterancy. Um, one of the best ways to break a super turtle is going to be to spam it with air. Um, I don't know if anybody has said that in any of the channels or anything like that, but, um, just, to give you guys a heads up for those of you who go against the super turtle and you think it's annoying it's easily beaten if you know what you're doing well i won't say easily because i mean it's still pretty hard and it takes a lot to do it um that's that's why we adapted our super turtle strategy and that's why crazy rap man and i um did our super turtles aggressively where we stuck them in three bases and then set defenses up because then they don't have the money and production advantage on you if you think about it with this map we've got three bases they've got the rest of the map so they could have three bases a piece for just money and a couple of slots for tech and then a whole nother base could be production so if you think about it they could send they could send seven hornets over every like 20 seconds i forgot how long it takes for hornets to come out or banshees or whatever air unit you want to bring over um and they could send over seven at a time granted we do have a lot of anti-air but if they just keep smashing us and smashing us and smashing us with it we're either going to run out of money or we're not going to be able to make uh we're not going to be able to make units quick enough which means we're going to have to recycle a pad to put up a depot which means our money's not going to come in um and if that's the case, you can eventually end up choking us out. You don't want to wait until really late because then we're going to have veterancy stuff. It's going to be way harder to take out. So take your time with it. Um, but like I said, like it doesn't really matter if you take a long time getting your stuff together to kill the Super Turtle as long as you're not constantly just wasting time sending units in to die. If you send a bunch of tanks in, my Cobras and Wolverines, whatever I have, it's all going to get veterancy. It's going to be really hard to take out when you come in. If you come in with the air units first, you're going to have Wolverines and Vamps that don't have any veterancy, and you're going to be able to, you'll lose, you'll probably lose all your units in the first couple of waves. But like I said, the Covenant guy right now, he's got two shields. He's got his temple, two summits, and I think that left him room for two supply pads. So you got to think about how much money he's not making right now. If he has to recycle something to put up another summit, his first thing he's probably going to get rid of is going to be a shield because you need the money. And then if you have a base that has seven on it, that means, uh, sure, he'll be able to build three vampires, but you'll be able to build seven of whatever you're making. Um, if you, especially if you're Covenant, if you get sacrificed Banshees, the only way to stop them from sacrificing other than like a cryobomb is going to be stasising them down because any other unit, the Wolverines, everything, they're going to shoot right through them and they're going to fall and hit something. So if you just keep spamming with air, normally that'll be a Super Turtle. 
Um, if you're going against people that are really, really good with super turtling and they're, you know, they're just really adamant about, you know, completely defending whatever they're trying to defend and everything, and they're not going to give you any room to breathe, um, you'll still have a chance going against them with air. So if you see right now, most of our defense is against vehicles because that's what's prominent. A lot of people use vehicles. That's just what people use, and that's what does the most damage per second. But if you if you come over with air units, I have four Wolverines. The other UNSC guy I think had six or eight was the most he had built, and the other guy has a lot of amps, but we can't stop three full pops of air. There's just no way because a lot of our defense is set up against vehicles. Um, another key, when you come over, don't try to attack the Cobras. If you attack Cobras, you give us room to make Wolverines. So don't go for the Cobras, go for the bases and go for their anti-air. Um, once you take out all the units that are anti-air, they're going to replace it with anti-air. But like I said, if you, if you kill a Cobra and you're coming over with only air, then I'm going to be building another Wolverine. Um, so that's, that's my two cents on how to beat a super turtle. If you guys, um, if you guys get into a super turtle and the guys are being assholes about it and they're just like, Hey, you guys are bad. You guys should just quit, quit right now or something like that. You know, then this is a way that you'll be able to beat them. So just keep that in mind next time. Um, if you get into a position where, um, you're getting super turtled against and everything like that, and they got a lot of Cobras set up and everything, just go ahead and start making air. Uh, don't send them in like five or ten at a time. The first time you do it, make a full pop. And just run all of them all in at one time, hitting one base. And just go from there. Especially if it's Banshees, don't even worry about the anti-air. Just start attacking the base. Because if you shut the base down and you still have units over there attacking so they won't be able to buy the base. Um, especially in this one. Um, if you take out the base and you're able to buy the base from them and they can't kill it or something like that, they have nowhere to go because you have the rest of the map. They'll have to kill a base and wait for the 25 or 30 seconds for the lost timer or the um, the rebuild time on the base. So that means their lost timer is going to go out as long as you can keep buying the base. You're going to have plenty of money to do it. And like I said, even if you don't kill the bases, if you do end up killing some of the units and everything, we're going to have to rebuild the units, but we only have enough room for about two vehicle depots or two summits. If you guys each have seven air pads on a base a piece, you can make seven units a piece when we can only make two a piece. Granted, we're making units that counter yours, but you're still going to be able to do a lot of work. Um, so anyway, that uh, really wanted to go ahead and explain that because one, I really didn't know what I was going to talk about in this video because I kind of I've already covered. Uh, the people that sent me subscribers and stuff like that and I really appreciate it still but I don't want to keep going on about it um, and I covered the whole Dota thing I've covered everything so um, just trying to come up with some filler stuff to talk about um, go ahead and leave me some comments and stuff like that with this video and let me know if you guys have any ideas for coming up videos if you guys want to see another super turtle if you want to see a super turtle with a certain uh, combo being run um, if you want to see, if you want to see just a regular game with a certain combo being run, just let me know. Um, but anyway, you see here this last little skirmish over here. There's only about 20 seconds left in this video, so I'm gonna be leaving you guys. Uh, I don't remember if I leave you guys on a cliffhanger or on a good note with this third one. But anyway, I only got about 10 seconds left, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So uh, thanks for watching part three of the uh, Don't Leave Me Hanging Super Turtle. And I'll definitely be uploading this uh, tonight so you guys will get two in one day. Peace.